What's up everybody, Matthew Monas here, and this is the MSI GS63VR with the latest Max-Q 1070 GPU. This is the first MSI laptop to support it, and I'm gonna review it and let you know whether or not it's actually worth it. Let's start with the design, and I really dig the look of the Stealth Pro. It's all black with just the MSI logo in the middle and a simple red stripe going across the back. The lid and the deck is made out of all metal, and the bottom has a felt material to prevent it from scratching the surface or feeling hot on your lap. It manages to stay classy while showing off that it's ready to game. Because of the GPU and CPU inside of here, there's tons of venting going on. You got vents on each side of the laptop, there's grills on the back, and you have a grill on the top and bottom to let air pass through. It's actually crazy to think that this laptop is only 0.69 inches thick. To put this in perspective, it's slightly bigger than the razor blade, but just as light and thin. Speaking of the inside, everything is pretty much upgradable, but not every Everything is easy to get to. There's three fans on the top to cool the CPU and GPU. On the bottom left, you have a 2.5 inch bay for the hard drive inside, but if you want, you can actually swap it out for a regular SSD. The battery is a little small at 52 watt hours, but kind of understandable considering the size of this laptop. Now, the RAM and M2 SSD are actually on the other side of the motherboard. They're not soldered on, they are upgradable, but they just require a bit more work to get to. The 15 inch display on the Stealth Pro is really good. It can produce over 100% of the sRGB color gamut and 89% of Adobe RGB. And the best part is that it has a 120 hertz panel. Gaming on a display with such high refresh rates makes the game feel significantly smoother. Now the only downfall is that it's a TN panel, which is absolutely fine for gaming, but not the best for great viewing angles and creative work. Now if you're wondering if this panel supports a G-Sync, it doesn't. But if you do hook up an external monitor that does have G-Sync, it will work. So just above the display is a 720p webcam. This is what it looks like. It's an okay quality. I mean, it is kind of dark in here right now. It's about eight o'clock at night, but totally fine for streaming games and video conferencing. Moving on to sound and squeezed into the bottom front are a pair of speakers. They're tiny, but managed to get pretty loud. Vocals and highs were mostly emphasized, but you won't find much bass. I play with all the different music settings in the Namek 2 software and found the music preset to be the most consistent. The typing experience on the Stealth Pro is very comfortable. I found the keys to be slightly soft, but springy. There was a nice bounce in them, making them great for gaming. The travel distance is good too at 1.6 millimeters, and there's RGB lighting that can actually be customized to your heart's content. You have three zones, you can change them to any color you want and use the presets to make the lights bounce, breathe, or move to the music. But the touchpad on the other hand wasn't so pleasant to use. It uses ELAN drivers and I didn't find it to be the most accurate when moving my fingers around. The worst part had to be the clicking though. It felt very stiff and shallow requiring a lot more force than usual to register each click. Now let's talk about the performance. And you can either get this as the 15 inch version, which I have here, or a 17 inch version. Both of them come with an i7 7700HQ processor and the new GTX Max-Q 1070. Just a quick note about the Max-Q GPUs. First and foremost, they're actually 1070 GPUs, but there's a few things that have been tweaked. For one, the clock speeds are a little bit lower, and two, the thermal output is also lower, so they don't produce as much heat. With that being said, is they're not actually as fast as a regular GTX 1070. You can expect a 10 to 15% performance decrease. Now, I'm totally cool with that. If you can fit a GTX 1070 that's slightly slower than a regular one inside a chassis this thin, then I will take the sacrifice because that means I can take this portable, powerful gaming house anywhere I wanna go in the world and I can game and most importantly, edit video. Speaking of games, this handles games very, very well. For example, I played Overwatch and I had no problems getting 120 frames per second with the settings set to Ultra. In Player Unknown Battleground, I was getting around 70 frames per second with the settings set at its highest. And finally, I tested Destiny 2, the beta, and I was getting frame rates between 90 and 100 frames per second with the settings at its highest. Besides that, I've also tested a bunch of other games for your reference. And as you can see, it has zero issues handling 
any game comfortably at 1080p. In fact, if you were to hook up a QHD monitor and play some games at QHD, it can handle a lot of those titles just fine as well. In terms of heat management, the surface of the laptop stayed between 45 to 48 degrees Celsius. That's not too bad. As long as it doesn't go above 50, I'm okay with that. Also, MSI says on their website that the surface should run around that range. But what kind of had me concerned was the CPU temperatures. It would go all the way up to 95 or 96 degrees and then thermal throttle, and it would do it quite easy. Now, I was playing lots and lots of games. I didn't find the performance of the game to be effective. It's just something to keep in mind if you plan on using this laptop for very long long periods of time. In terms of noise, at idle it stays around 38 decibels and when it's fully loaded doing whatever it can it gets up to around 44 which is still fairly quiet. And last up is battery life. Now like I said before the battery inside here is pretty small so you're not going to get good battery life. If you're just browsing the web and doing simple tasks you can get about three and a half to four hours of use but if you're gaming you're not going to get much more than an hour to two hours before needing to plug in. So here's what I like about the new MSI Stealth Pro. I like the design. Even though it's a gaming laptop and there's a little bit of gaming accents on it, it still manages to stay somewhat classy. I like the display. Even though it's a TN panel, it's still color accurate, has a 120 hertz refresh rate and very low latency. And finally, I like the keyboard. It's very comfortable to type on and those of you who game will appreciate the springy feel. The only things I don't like about this laptop is the finicky touchpad and sometimes it runs a bit too hot while I'm gaming. Overall, it's crazy to think that you can get a GTX 1070 in a laptop this size. This is a great time for laptops. We are now at the point where you can get a lot of power in such a small form factor. The MSI Stealth Pro retails for $2,400 and I'll place a link in the description down below. Let me know what you guys think of this review. Do you guys like this laptop? Is this something you can see yourself buying? I want to hear what you have to say. Like this video if you liked it. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and as always, I will see you in the next video.